Praise God. Praise God. Let the people of God say amen. Amen. I welcome you to the Break Broadcast, a weekly Bible teaching program where we exalt, where we edify, and challenge believers to the Great Commission. Here, we also call sinners to repentance through the gospel of Jesus Christ. Thank you for joining us. Today, we are going to talk about truth. Truth. What to do with it. Truth is something that is no longer uh, in the vocabulary of people in the 21st century. Uh, it's, it's just not there. So let's talk about that today. But before we go into our lesson, let us pray. Father, we thank you. Sweet blessed Jesus, the son of the living God, we honor you. Holy Spirit, we adore you. Thank you for the work of redemption that you did on the cross, Jesus. Thank you, Father, for loving the world so that you gave your son. Sweet, blessed Holy Spirit, thank you for indwelling us to keep us on the narrow path. We pray, O oh Lord, that you bring your word to our heart on this program and show us the path of life. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. The topic is truth what to do with it and our case study would be a group of um, quite some remarkable people from the new testament we are looking at zacchaeus in that group king agrippa in that group the pharisees they're also in that group and king herod so put them together they will be a case study and our foundation text is john chapter 8 Verse 31, we stop at 32. The Gospel according to St. John, chapter 8, verse 31, we stop at 32. Then Jesus said to those Jews who believed him, If you abide in my word, you are my disciples indeed, and you shall know the truth. And the truth shall make you free. Amen. Now, what is truth? I love sometimes to, to just go into the dictionary, Oxford, Webster, whatever, uh, just to find out some biblical words or some um, Bible terms. It, it's amazing the uh, definitions that you get from all these circular fruitcake dictionaries. Uh, now, this is the dictionary meaning of truth according to them. The quality or state of being true. That which is true or in accordance with fact or reality. You see, now there is problem with that. A fact or belief that is accepted as true. Now let's look at biblical definitions of truth. And the best one I found was from uh, Grace to You, John, uh, John MacArthur, Pastor MacArthur. I love the way he said it. And I quote, Truth is the self-expression of God. I like that. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Truth is ontological, that is a state of being. It's not evolving, no, it's just the way, it's always like that. That is, reality is what it is because God declared it so and made it so. You see, that is reality. Therefore, God is the author, source, determiner, governor, arbiter, ultimate standard, 
and final judge of all truth. I like that. End of quote. For example, in Exodus chapter 20, God was speaking to the children of Israel, Thou shalt not. Why? Because I am the Lord. You see, he's saying, Thou shalt not, because I, God, said so. End of story. You see. So what do you do with truth? Number one, you can receive the truth. Zacchaeus, one of our, uh, our case study, although appeared wealthy on the outside, people look at Zacchaeus, he had a nice house, he's got fat bank, bank account, he got it together, so to speak. But on the inside, he had a famished soul, you see. Zacchaeus represented the repressed class, you see. And I thank the Holy Spirit who gave me the example of Zacchaeus because uh, most of the times uh, Bible teachers tend to use the poor in the, in the Bible and uh, uh, some unbelievers, they, they, they picked on that. Like, why, why is it that everybody has to be, to be poor? So that means if I come to Jesus, I'm going to be poor. And I loved it because the Holy Spirit gave me this. Zacchaeus was a wealthy man, but very poor in the spirit, you see. So he was a repressed individual, spiritually, you see. However, Zacchaeus sought to see Jesus as Jesus passed by as Jesus is passing by right now, as you are listening and watching me. Jesus is passing by right now because you are listening to his word. Zacchaeus received Jesus into his house and retained God's word in his heart. Zacchaeus reacted to the word which he heard by paying back those he had cheered, you see, and shared his wealth with the poor. A truth that did not elicit a change that is consistent with the Bible in your behavior is a truth that is yet to be received in your life. You see, when Zacchaeus received the truth of Jesus into his life, something changed on the inside. And that change appeared on the physical in the actions that he took. Let's go to Proverbs chapter 28, verse 13. Proverbs 28, 13. It says, He who covers his sins will not, will not prosper. You see? But whoever confesses and forsakes them will have mercy. You see? When you have received the truth of Jesus' word, you will confess your sin. And not only that, you will forsake them. You will walk away and change direction. You see, that is what it means to have received the truth. To commit to Jesus is to submit to freedom. To commit to Jesus is to submit to freedom. Moving on. You cannot only receive the truth, but some people will resist the truth, I'm sorry, restrict the truth. You can restrict the truth. King Agrippa came face to face with Apostle Paul. Agrippa, listen, was an intelligent but corrupt and immoral king. He represented the ruling class. Wow. That reminds me of some people in this land, huh? Agrippa was confronted with the truth. He was convinced of the truth. Yet in the end, he refused to commit to the truth. You see, are you in the ruling class? Are you a politician? I think a lot of politicians need to listen to this in the United States and all over the world, or you are a ruling class in your company, 
wherever God has placed you as a leader, then you are in the ruling class. And the truth of the gospel is confronting you right now. What are you going to do with Jesus? Huh? Agrippa refused to commit to the truth because he wanted to continue his sinful lifestyle. How about you? Huh? To refuse to surrender the control of your life to Jesus. After hearing and comprehending the word of God is to restrict the truth. Jesus will not, underscore that, will not force anyone to receive him. It's not going to happen. Mm. If you are expecting Jesus to send an angel with wings or to club you on the head, uh, Jesus doesn't stone people. He doesn't chop people's heads off if they don't receive him. Oh no, he doesn't. He will respect your free will. You see, but the end will be disastrous. And that's why he's sending me to you. Let's go to Proverbs 29, chapter, uh, verse 1. Proverbs chapter 29, verse 1. He who is often rebuked and hardens his neck will suddenly, underscore that, suddenly be destroyed and that without remedy. You see, if you understand what I'm saying and your heart is telling you right now, you know she's telling you the truth. That is the Holy Spirit using your conscience to challenge you. Now, if you still decide not to change and hand over your life to Jesus, you have just restricted the truth. And the Bible says you may be destroyed suddenly. This may be your last time of being alive. You don't know what's going to happen. You see, sin fascinates before it assassinates. Now, I saw this somewhere. I didn't know who wrote it or who came up with that. Uh, but that really blessed me. And I said, I will share this with people. Sin fascinates before it assassinates. Do not be assassinated by sin. Moving on. You can receive the truth. You can restrict the truth. Now, let's talk about resisting the truth. You can resist the truth. The Pharisees were the resistance party. They were the resistance party and destroyed Jesus' movement in the time of Jesus. You see, the resist party, they, don't, they didn't just start. No, it started way back. This is the religious class. See what? Uh-huh. They are the religious class. Likewise, many people, listen up close, are devoted to this ideology of anger or hate against Jesus or Christianity in today's America. In today's Europe, in today's Asia, in today's Australia, in today's Africa, many people, they have this ideology of anger and hate against Jesus and anything Christianity. Do you know what you are doing? If you are one of those, you are resisting the truth. You are a member of the resist party and destroy Jesus movement. You are a member of that. But you can change membership. This doesn't stem from intellectual problem. Your problem is not intellectual. If you hate Christianity, if you hate Jesus, your problem is not intellectual. Your problem is moral. Oh yeah. Well, where do you think you are? Your problem is moral. It's not intellectual. It's because you don't want to be accountable to a higher power to examine everything you have done in your life. And it's going to happen. You don't have to like it, 
But you're going to stand before God one day, before Jesus, and all the evil you have done, all the secret stuff that you have done is going to be exposed. So your hating Jesus, your hating Christianity is nothing about, I can understand them. No, that's a lie. But that can change, okay? You may say you don't like Christians. I just don't like the way they talk about Jesus, about the Bible, or their biblical views. They are so narrow-minded. But your hatred is actually with the truth, you see? So your problem is not with the gender of the person preaching to you right now. Oh no. Your problem is not with the skin color of the person preaching to you right now. Oh no. And your problem is not with the accent of the person preaching right now. Your problem is with the truth. You don't want to hear the truth. You see. Let's go to Romans chapter 3 verse 3 and we stop at verse 4 a romans 3 we start 3 and we stop 4 a what then listen up the bible is talking to you i'm not jesus is talking to you if some did not believe what if you don't believe huh will their unbelief cancel god's faithfulness will your unbelief stop god from what he's going to do I don't think so. God forbid. It's not going to happen. For God is true. Hallelujah. And every person, if you are watching me, and your blood pressure is rising up right now because you are angry, and you say, she's so rude, talking about her Jesus, listen, your anger, your hate, for Jesus and Christianity is not going to stop what God is going to do. So do yourself a favor, stop the hate. Go on your knees, get down from your high horse and recognize Jesus as your Lord because he's going to be for your own good, not for your destruction if you do that. To strut with the world is to be struck with the world to crush your world. I am going to stop and I will say it slowly because the Holy Spirit himself gave me that. He said many people need to hear that bread on the go. If you, are, if you have the pack mentality, you have joined the little group where it's fun, it's nice to belong to the group, that 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 uh, abuses christians you curse christians out you like to make like, their lives miserable or anything about jesus you are in the pack listen you are strutting with the world it's fun right because you are a group doing all that very soon if you don't change you are going to be struck with that world where they attack jesus and christianity but when that destruction comes, guess who is going to feel it individually? It's not going to be a group uh, feeling any longer. So, to strut with the world is to be struck with the world to crush your world. Don't let your world be crushed. Get out of that madness. Don't join the group that hates Jesus or hates Christianity. It's because they hate the truth. Get out of that group in Jesus' name. Now, another thing you can do with the truth is to ridicule the truth. Maybe you've been watching me and you've been laughing yourself silly since I've been preaching. Listen up. When Herod had the chance of a lifetime to see Jesus, he mocked Jesus. So you're not the first person to laugh at Christianity. Oh no, you are not. Herod did. Why did he do that? Because Herod was a man given to pleasure, you see. This is the relaxed class. They can't be bothered. Everything is good and dandy. 
a good job, a beautiful house in an upscale area. I mean, life is good. They are relaxed. Many prefer to postpone the salvation of their soul for one more day of pleasure. Everyone who procrastinates their salvation is possessed with the spirit of Herod. You see, if you are one of those, yeah, you are right, Josephine Zion. Yeah, I've, I've, I've been considering uh, this um, Christianity thing. You see, Lee Struggle, I was reading something credited to him about three days ago, um, and he was talking about Hugh Efner, the guy that died very recently, uh, that he went to preach to him. Uh, he said this man was presented with the gospel, but unfortunately, he didn't examine the evidence of the gospel, you see. But you, 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 you are like, yeah, I think you are right. I'm supposed to give my life to Jesus, but I will do it some other day. Listen, that is the spirit of Herod, and he's trying to destroy you. If you are procrastinating your salvation, you have just ridiculed the truth. That's all you have done. Let's go to Proverbs chapter 14, verse 9. The book of Proverbs chapter 14, verse 9. A fool, I didn't call you that. The Bible did. The Bible did. A fool will laugh at sin. But among the just, grace shall abide. If you know, if you have any idea, the devastation that sin brings to people's lives, spiritually and physically, you will not want to wait one more second to turn your life over to Jesus Christ. And I pray that God will give you a vision that will disturb you about the consequences of sin, to let you know sin is the worst enemy that people are. I'm telling you. To postpone your salvation is to prefer physical pleasures to spiritual treasures. Let's say that again. To postpone your salvation is to prefer physical pleasures to spiritual treasures. Now we've talked about what you can do with the truth. Let's talk about what you cannot do with the truth because in this ministry by the grace of god we have been charged by the holy spirit to present the word of god black and white balanced okay that's what is acceptable unto the lord number one you cannot repress the truth the pharisees bribe the soldiers and ask them to lie that the body of jesus had been taken away by his disciples Thus denying the Lord's resurrection. However, hallelujah, the Bible records in various times and manners in which Jesus appeared to his disciples after the resurrection with many proofs. In one situation, Jesus appeared to over 500 people at once. You can call one man crazy. You can call two, maybe a little bit. But if you call 500, over 500 people crazy, people will look at you, you see. So there are infallible proofs that Jesus resurrected. Physically, people saw him. The ability of truth to resurrect is divine. Because God himself is the truth, you see. Let's go to the Gospel according to St. Luke, chapter 8, verse 17. Luke 8, 17, and this is the spiritual principle for uh, what you call secret things. There's nothing called secret things spiritually. It says there's nothing hidden that will not be revealed. There's nothing kept secret that will not come to light. There's nothing. So if you think you have done something in secret, you are just fooling yourself because Spiritually speaking, is an open scandal in heaven, you see. Truth may walk slow, but its work does show. Truth may walk slow, but its work does show. 
Another thing you cannot do with the truth is that you cannot reveal the truth. God said, let there be. And things have been that way since creation. To want to redefine that is to put up a fight through forceful indoctrination, you see. Truth is constant. A woman is a woman physically, anatomically, and emotionally, period. Sometimes when I get on the phone, especially in the morning, <laughs> and uh, the person on the other end, they, they are saying, yes, sir. Because my voice is, can be really deep when I first get up in the morning. Uh, so you can mistake my voice for a man's voice when I'm talking at a low octave. Uh, if somebody is a blind individual, they may not see my physical feature. But by the time they listen to my voice, my, the emotions in my tone, nobody is going to tell that person, I'm a woman. You see, how uh, are they able to decipher that? Because God has said so. Not only physically, that she look like a woman, but anatomically and emotionally. You see, any attempt to change that truth that this is God, this is the way God has created a woman, we involve discomfort, agitation, destabilization, and many more stuff that we just aggravate the whole system because it's an attempt to change the truth, you see. Second Corinthians chapter 13, verse 8a. 2 Corinthians 13, 8a, for we cannot do nothing against the truth. End of story. We cannot do anything against the truth. God said, let there be, and that's it. You cannot change it. It doesn't matter how hard you try, it's not going to change because truth is constant. It cannot be revealed. Truth stings because truth sticks. Truth stings because truth sticks. So what have you done so far? What can you do with the truth? You can receive it by accepting it and following the dictates of the truth. You can restrict it by refusing to commit to the truth despite understanding the ramifications. You can resist the truth by denying that the truth is what it is. You can ridicule the truth by postponing making a decision to follow the truth. What can you not do with the truth? You cannot repress the truth. It has a divine life of outliving innumerable lives. You cannot review it. Truth has been fixed and set in stone. Let's conclude. Truth has a name. His name is Jesus. If you have been listening to his word and you still don't want to commit your life to him, know that you have a date with Jesus. Oh yeah. You are going to see him face to face one day. But it's not going to be pretty unless you commit your life to him now it's not your decision you can't say oh I don't want to face that dear Jesus no it's not your call that is his call you see you are going to be face to face with Jesus on your knees whether you believe him or not if you believe him it will be a day of joy if you don't it's going to be a day of lake of fire you see if your life has not changed or your life is not changing, having listened to the word of God, and you call yourself a Christian, you are yet to receive the truth into your heart. If you have received the truth of God's word, your life ought to be changing. Now, Jesus doesn't want anyone to perish because there is no second chance once you die. Mm -mm. So he's calling you to amend your ways right now. If you ask Jesus into your life, he will cleanse you with his blood and give you his power 
to start living according to his word. If you are ready, a link is coming up. I will say a quick prayer. Click on that link and we will meet you on the web page that it takes you to. And there we give you further instructions. Amen. Father, we thank you. Your word has gone forth. Lord, to believers, to unbelievers alike, to those who are still considering or to those who are, who are ready to make a change, Father, I pray, let your word challenge every one of us in the name of Jesus. And Lord, with your truth, lead us to the light in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father, Lord. For in Jesus' name, I will pray. Amen and amen. I will see you next week. Only if Jesus has not split the sky open.